Hi, this is Brian Oliva at Get So Many Music. Today we're going to talk about file management on the Moog Muse, particularly preset management. I don't know if I've been spoiled or not by owning that supercomputer of a synth, the Moog One, for the past six years that allows the use of a, of a simple flash drive to load firmware and presets using an intuitive user interface, and then offers virtually unlimited user memory and a simple method to filter your thousands of presets to quickly find what you're looking for. But with regard to the Moog One's younger sibling, you won't have to worry about any of that. Well, the Moog Muse is more affordable than the Moog One, sounds very good with several new features, and is easier to take on the road. My biggest disappointment is the extremely limited user memory and the fact that it must be tethered to a computer for any updates. In this video, we'll touch on how to hook up the Muse to do file management, uh, take a look at the file structure, and offer tips as to how to prevent making mistakes that could break your new synth. Presets on the Muse are arranged into 16 banks of 16 presets each for a total of only 256. The factory set occupies banks 1 to 14, leaving only two banks or 32 slots for user presets or adding presets from uh, other sources unless you're prepared to overwrite the factory banks. As we showed you in our video on how to do firmware updates, you begin by connecting the Muse to your computer with a USB-B cable on the back of the Muse to your USB hub on your computer. Holding down the select button that's just to the left of the programmer display uh, while turning on the unit will put the Muse into disk mode. The Muse should now show up in your file directory as an external hard drive. If you open that up, you'll see that it has three folders in it. The first is firmware. that contains the MoogMuse firmware.bin file. Don't touch that one. The library folder is where we will be working. Within the library folder, there's a folder for each of the 16 banks, and there may be others for chords and sequences that were built in at that time as well. Uh, at the very bottom is a utility folder uh, that's currently empty, so we'll ignore that. Within each bank, there is a .bank file that is used for the bank name when you're looking at it. Then uh, there's a folder for each patch with an MMP file that's the actual uh, patch data. If you look into that, uh, similar to the Moog one, it's a big text file. It has all the parameters that make up the preset, and that's what the uh, the Muse looks at to basically set itself up to do whatever's in there. Uh, we won't mess with that data either. What we will do is open up another uh, window. Uh, we're going to go to the download folder. Uh, we're going to be assuming that that's where the bank of patches you want to overwrite uh, the factory patches with are. In this case, my Muse already has the bonus patches in, so we're going to go back and restore the original factory patches. At this point, I'm going to say that whatever you have on the Muse, before you overwrite it, back it up by copying the entire folder over to your uh, computer. I've already got both the bonus patches and the factory patches backed up, so I don't need to do that in this case. But once you overwrite something on the Muse, there's no way to get it back if you didn't back it up on your computer somewhere. That applies to firmware, that applies to all the patches, and any other data you're moving into the Muse. So now we're getting ready to copy. So we're going to go into the library bank on the Muse and into the library bank of the presets we want to copy. I'm going to copy all the folders and just drag them into the Muse to replace the folders that are already there. You should get a warning that they already exist, that the folders already exist. We want to replace everything that's in there, not merge it or anything else. We're checking apply to all and replacing everything with the files we're dragging in. It takes three or four minutes to copy all the files. Now that they've been copied, I want to do one more step. I now have in the Muse the original factory patches, but I want to add the lead bank from the bonus patches into one of the other banks that are currently just set up for uh, user use. 
So I'm going into my backup file for the bonus patches, going into bank 9. And I'm going to open up bank 15 on the Muse, which is just in at patches right now. So I'm going to delete all the data in bank 15. Now that bank 15 is empty, I'm going to take all the files from the bonus patch bank 9, which was the lead patches, and I'm going to drag those into the bank 15 folder in the Muse. What that should give me now is all the factory patches in banks 1 through 14 and the bonus lead patches in bank 15. And that still leaves bank 16 with nothing in it but init patches if in case I want to create my own or save something or put something else in there later. Now that all the files have been copied into the Muse, the last step and by far the most important one is to eject the Muse from your computer. Failure to do that could corrupt the files on the Muse itself and depending on what gets corrupted might prevent you from ever booting it up again. So be sure you disconnect the Muse from the computer by ejecting it first and then disconnecting the wires. Don't just pull the plug on it or turn it off. Once it's been ejected, the display should say Disk Mode Session Ended. You can now power cycle the Muse. And after it reboots, you should find that all the patches have been updated. Banks 1 through 14 contain all the original factory presets, which we just reinstalled. And Bank 15 has the lead parts from the bonus bank that I copied in at the end. And Bank 16, which we never touched, still shows up as user bank 2, and there's nothing in that but init patches. That's all we have for today. If you found the video useful, please remember to like it and subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for more as we continue to explore the Moog Muse, and thanks again for watching.